welcome to my craft room. Today we are going to make epoxy tumblers, but we are going to use beads to make our design. So you might be familiar with these. They're kind of like Mardi Gras beads, and I just cut them basically a little bit longer than the length of a cup so that we can make our design. So we are gonna get started. This is pretty easy of a cup to design. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to uh, perfecting what you're going to do. So I'm going to begin with some acrylic paints. I have a few different brands in here. Uh, you can see that one of them is patio paint, but it is still acrylic paint. That is what is most important um, to have. I have these laying around for multiple projects that I do, but I do still use them on tumblers when necessary, and there is no effect on the epoxy when used. Again, you just wanna make sure that it is acrylic paint. I picked a few different colors here that I want to use for the design, um, and let's get to it. So. There's not much prep that you need done on the cup. This is a cup that I have previously stripped and because it is already a black tumbler, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, you see some imperfections on here. So it's time for us to cover that up. A lot of people will normally mix their paints for this, um, this method, but I just go right in and you just want to make sure you have some area coverage on here. It's going to feel like it's thick, but while this cup is rolling, it is going to partially level itself out, but we're going to come in and help it in a little bit here. On the inside of my cup, uh, you will see on another video that I have posted how I prep my cups before doing anything to them to protect and to make it just a little bit easier for um, cleanup when the cup is done. And you'll see I'm just giving it a section here. I don't really care to cover this all the way, but I'm covering it as much as I can. And make sure and shake your paints before you use them. And I'm gonna come in just a little bit right on the line. You will want to put some butcher paper down um, I know that we use different things to protect our tumbler area, but I like to use butcher paper for this. It's thick enough that the paint won't seep in, especially while it's drying. Or seep through, sorry. <laughs> and you can use these colors as much and as little as you would like based on what the design is that you want at the end and how these colors are gonna blend. So I'm just giving a little bit of brightness to the middle before I get in with some more bland and darker colors, darker hued colors. And you can see up here already how it's starting to come together. I wanna say you can't put too much paint on this design. There's no such thing as too much, but there might be depending on what you think is a lot of paint. <laughs> I am gonna show you guys how I'm going to even this out though. As soon as we get all of our layers in, mixing the paints with water will help you. Um, you just wanna make sure you have a good consistency on your paint. You don't want them to run too much off of the cup. You wanna have it that enough of it is gonna stay on the cup for you to utilize in the next steps that we're gonna have. And if you give the cup a good enough amount of time, they will mesh into each other too. There's no rhyme or reason on how you can put your colors on. Uh, you can choose any colors that you want to. Just have fun. Okay. 
There are many ways to achieve this look. This is just the easy and just go at it way that I have found. <laughs> I am a big believer in just get to the project once you have the right things. And once you're comfortable, just you wanna get comfortable when you're making your cups. You wanna just go into it, don't think about it and just have fun. Now I make sure that I get baby wipes and one of these little silicone brushes and I help it kind of go in very lightly. And this is me just helping to spread and get some of those areas that it's not really spreading to and help get some of the ex excess off. You don't want to take too much off because of the next steps that we're going to do. So I'm just basically trying to just even it out, but I'm not removing more than necessary. I'm literally on here very lightly and just spreading. If you start to see the areas are thin, I also just use the tip of it and just pull it softly. It's okay if you merge your colors. We're gonna do that soon anyway. When I get down here to the bottom, I will kind of pull some to the bottom of the cup just to help roll and just give the bottom just a little bit of color. But at the end, I also just pick up some of the paint that's on the table and give the bottom a very colorful effect to kind of match the top of the cup. So this right now looks like one of the most ugliest cups that we could possibly make. You're probably thinking, what the heck? How are we gonna sell this cup? We are going to fix it right now. <laughs> okay. So now you take your Mardi Gras bead. You wanna hold it pretty heavily, pretty strong, pretty tight. And now you go in up and down. No right or wrong. You can do up and down, or you can do little circles here. You wanna make sure you're blending these colors pretty well. So while you're doing it, you're making sure that the beads, as it goes into the color, it's also coming through on the top and the bottom color, uh, the color that's on top and below it. So I go in first, just straight up and down, and then I come back in and I do the circles. Helping it go up and down helps those colors to mesh at first. And then now we're doing these circles to just give it a little bit of a nice design. 
so that it doesn't just seem so harsh. This is also helping you put in those areas that had just a little bit too much of the paint. And so you're just merging them all in, giving everything a nice tone. You can go through as many rotations as you want to get the nice uh, effect that you're looking for. So as you can see, the longer that I'm doing this, the more the colors are merging in together. You don't see as harsh of spots. And that's kind of the look that I want on this cup. And there you have it. So now you will leave this for a little while to dry. I have left mine in the past for about a day or so. What I do now to show you guys to do the bottom, I just come here with that same stick or um, silicone stirrer, whatever it is that you're using, whatever these things are called. <laughs> and I just make my own mix and I just come in and give the bottom just a little bit of attention. And I try to cre recreate those circles that we just did on the top, just giving the bottom some kind of design so that it just doesn't look out of place. You can do this on whatever color base of a cup that you would like. You can do a white base and just leave it. You can do a colored base that might accent, you know, the basis of the cup or the colors that you use on the cup. But I just go in with a mix. And I just move it around for any little streaked areas that might pull that might have pulled away as it was spinning. Your cup will feel like it has a little bit of texture to it, but now as we get into epoxying, I do have a cup that I created previously. Um, so I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and then we're gonna come back and epoxy another cup that I've created previously with some other colors so that I can show you how we're gonna get rid of some of those little ridges that are in here from the paint. Okay, so the cup that we just created is on the side and it is turning to dry. So in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and epoxy this cup. So this one I did about two days ago. I left it for a full 24, maybe about a day and a half to dry. I slowly went, I knew that the top had some of the thickest areas of when I um, applied the paint. So I just would check there. I did hit it with a heat gun. Um, as well as the cup over on the side, just to help at least the, the top layer to start to dry a little bit better. So if anything lands on it or anything touches it, it's kind of okay. But to get that impact all the way through, you are going to leave the cup to turn for a few days or a day and a half. So now we are going to epoxy this cup. Uh, depending on when you're watching this video, I may be about to, or I may have already posted a video about the epoxy that I use. I use only a little extra um, epoxy. The scent is not the strongest of scents, but it is still important that we wear our PPE. So I am going to put my mask on and I might start to sound a little muffled. Cutting out skinny tumbler, I pretty much use about 10 parts of part A, 10 parts of part B for my first layer, just to give it a good coat. And then I come in with a second coat and um, I, I will give it a little bit more. Because this cup has so many ridges on there, I do wanna take my time and come in with the epoxy slowly and not just do one full heavy flood coat on there. So I like my cups to be turning into my right hand so that as I'm applying, I can push this way and the cup will spin 
at, um, against the way that I'm pushing so that it can help it kind of level out. So I am feeling the ridges on the cup based on how I used the beads to thread in little areas. But as you're putting this epoxy, it's going to help it kind of level out itself. And you're not going to feel those areas and those gaps as much. This is also why my personal preference is to come in with uh, the epoxy a little bit of layers at a time. And that goes for all the cups that I do. I like to be able to watch if there's any areas that it might be, you know, gapping on or anything so that it's a little bit less sanding and any, um, you know, like troubleshooting that I might have to do towards the end of the, the application and when it's dry. You always want to be sure that all of your base work, whether you're using paint, glitter, um, hand painting, just a base of spray paint, you always want to make sure that this is fully covered and nicely covered before you start to sand to apply any kind of vinyl or um, water slides or anything to your project. Always remember to try to get as close as you can to the rim. If you've watched my video on how to prep your tumbler, you will know that I put Vaseline on the inside of my tumblers and that helps the epoxy not to dry and adhere to the inside or spread far farther down in the inside of the tumbler. So I have a little bit of epoxy left here. I'll just throw that into a mold but you can see this took even less than the 20 ounces or 20 ml, sorry. As you can see, of course, with ALE as always, there are no bubbles here as we're applying. I will let this spin for a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of heat from my heat gun just to pop any potential bubbles here. And that's that. So we're going to let this spin for about another three to four hours and then we'll come in and double check if we can apply a vinyl or if we can add another layer or if the cup is done.